Hey, welcome back to SharePoint TV. My name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm joined by Fabian Williams. Fabian, so good to see you. So good to see you as well. Well, why don't you introduce yourself for the folks that haven't seen you here? Certainly. My name is Fabian Williams. Um, I am a practice director for a company called Witham Digital, which is located in the DC metro area. Okay. I, ran, I run the process automation practice, and I'm a Microsoft MVP for Office Server and Services and Visual Studio. Fantastic. Now, I understand you've been doing a little bit of work to, to integrate some of those great Azure services mm -hmm. and features with SharePoint. Mm -hmm. Now, what kinds of things are you seeing and working with there? Well, beyond just SharePoint, um, you know, there's a rich ecosystem that's out there um, in the entire Office 365 um, you know, uh, area. And sure. what I've been doing is using Azure, fun Azure Functions as a way to communicate with the data stores that are behind there. Uh -huh. um, some of the things that like, you know, maybe using cognitive services to react to some data and also persisting the data or reading data from possibly SharePoint list, but also um, you know, from Office 365 Graph API. Okay, so yeah. you're able to take some of those, uh, some of those features that we're using around office mm -hmm. integrate it with cognitive services mm -hmm. make it more intelligent exactly okay and, and even take data that is somewhat even abstract like in the use case that we're going to be doing here today something possibly potentially in a business card that represents a user or a contact or a person right. and then bring that into the entire ecosystem as a contact in office 365 oh very cool or in, or in microsoft teams as well sure mm -hmm. oh that makes that makes great sense yeah okay so do you have a demo you can, you can sure, share with us? Absolutely. Right. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk through a narrative, um, you, know, you know, step by step by just say, starting, giving you a starting point and then walking you through the entire system. So the first screen that we have here on top right now is using the Division API, the Computer Vision API from um, Azure Cognitive Services. Sure, sure. And oh yeah, I've mm -hmm. seen this before. It helps you identify things that are in pictures, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So you know, if you consider a business card is in essence a picture, right, of just, you know, of just data and the, the challenge of the business card is that um, even if you're within the same organization, sometimes business cards will differ based on the person's credentials. Somebody has an MBA, somebody has a PhD. It's a little bit different that way. The titles are going to be different and so on yeah, and so forth. Yeah, there's a lot, yeah. a, a lot there to, to crunch and figure out well, what do we actually use this for. Exactly. You, okay. take, you take that out to different companies and now it just grows and grows and grows in mm. terms of the differences. So by using the Computer Vision API and using um, an OCR to JSON um, in a feature, we're able to take that information. It puts it in, that's what you're looking here on this side of the screen in um, bounding boxes and um, it basically gives you a JSON oops it gives you a JSON representation go back go back it gives you a JSON representation of what's on the card um, and oh. it's a great starting point Okay. But it, it's going to be unstructured. No two is probably ever going to be the same because the cards sure. are going to be different. Sure. So uh, it's a great starting point in order to get something meaningful. Now, once you've done that, um, if you use a company that I work for, for instance, as I mentioned, I work for a company called Witham, you know, Witham, you know, Witham Digital. Okay. It's an, and the accounting firm on top of it is called Witham, Smith & Brown. So okay. let's say that there's a Mr. John Witham. He works at Witham, Smith & Brown. What's the company? Who's the person? Oh, wow. Exactly, right? Yeah. So th that's not going to be quite obvious on the business card, and nothing is really saying person, this, company, that. Right. It's just telling you these are the locations <laughs> exactly. on the card. Okay. Right. So the, um, the name entity recognition um, endpoint um, in cognitive services has the ability to let you know, okay, this is a person. This uh -huh. is an organization, and what it's actually doing is, is uh, it has um, you know, these fields and qualifiers, but it also goes out to Bing as well. So Bing will be able to know, okay, this person, this person is a human being because I found him here. Uh -huh. This is a business entity as well. So one okay. API gets you the JSON, one, another API breaks it down a little bit more, and the challenge is to try and get as close to 100% as possible, which is sometimes, you know, it's, it's difficult because fonts also could be different, um, you know, and that plays a role into it, but just the way people put things on cards and language and cultures may be different as well, left to right, right to left. Sure. You know, that, that'll Gosh, that'll present challenges. Right yeah. <laughs> exactly, that presents a lot of challenges. Okay. But, but um, a good starting point is to, is to, you know, get this all into Microsoft of Azure because there's a solution for that. Okay. And uh, the first entry point is to get you know get yourself um, onto a, um, a, a function app, and a function app you know is backed by you know a storage account. You have a function account. We also have here in Smart Contacts. It's a cognitive service using that Vision API. Okay. And once you have this as the framework, then the next thing to start to do is actually you know to, you know, to basically code this out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna be able to take a picture, mm -hmm. upload it to that storage account. Mm -hmm. 
that the Azure function mm -hmm. would see mm -hmm. use cognitive services mm -hmm. to turn it into something that we can use. Exactly. Okay, I'm following you. Now, w would it be better to do a runtime demo experience and then go through it, um, you know, after, and so that, so that we conceptually can see what's going on, and then we just yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's, let's do that way. Take a look at what the experience is. All right. Okay. So let me go ahead and um, get my phone up. Okay. And we are going to take a picture of my business card, which I already have out here somewhere. Fabian business card. There we go. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see. All right. That's good. So I'm going to open up an application that I have. All right. Move this from behind here as well. We can actually see what's going on. Okay. And I'm going to press this. I'm going to put in my name. And I'm going to take the photo. I'm going to turn this up this way and do that. I'm going to say use photo. And before I actually commit it, let's go ahead and take a look inside Storage Explorer and check and make sure that you know I've cleaned up the area to make sure that I'm not there already. And there actually I found myself. So let's go ahead and actually remove me from there. So there's no Fabian Williams in here. We can definitely see that. Okay. Let's also go inside here and then remove. Uh, myself from here. Am I here? I am not there. So I'm going to go ahead now and say save. And what's happening right now is that th the first part is by, you know, the photo is being saved into, into um, this blob storage. Okay. And we're basically off to the races. And um, what's happening behind the scenes, we'll take a look in, in, in the code in a minute, is that that, that, um, that picture is going to come here. So I'm going to refresh. There it is, Fabian Williams, now popped up. Okay. So the picture is in the Azure storage area. Yeah, it's in the blob storage, in, in Azure blob storage. And sooner or later, what's happening now, it'll go down into these queues. And we have, and um, we, we can certainly talk a little bit about that, but we have several queues that's happening. We have a queue that'll create a new contact in Office 365. We have a queue that'll create the graph contact, and we have a queue that'll actually put it inside Teams. And in the end, we have an output of um, you know, that, new, that new representation. Okay. All right. So we, we'll, I'll have this, you know, you know, we'll set this to bake, and then we'll come back a little bit later. But that's, you know, that's basically the, the high so the it, view on it. So it's doing all that process mm -hmm. and put it, pulling it back together again using queues. Exactly, using queues. Exactly. So queues, okay. are, queues are very important in this realm because um, you, you want to be able to have multiple people use this system. You want to be able to allow for scale. And the queues allow you to stack information inside mm -hmm. there, and it just reads it from the top as needed until it gets through it. And queues also have the ability to, to retry, so it is somewhat durable. So you know, yeah. if, if there's something fails, it'll uh, it'll pick up and try back again. Okay. Right? Okay. So let me refresh this and see if I'm here yet. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit for Jolt to start uh, because I'm using the consumptive plan, so it may fall asleep at times, but it, it'll actually get there eventually. So I'll start by by going over here, and um, I'll start to do a new project to see how we get here. So let's, let me do a new. Go ahead. Go away. Right click. And a new Visual Studio project. The final one is behind the scenes there. Um, we, we'll come back to that, but I'll just show you how we can get kick-started. We're going to do a new project. It's going to be a new Azure function project. Okay. These templates are here, and it's very easy to use. going to say, you know, live demo SPTV1. And we'll do an OK. All right. And what's happening here, um, w within the templates provided to you in Visual Studio, you have the ability to create different types of Azure functions. Um, you can have an empty project, which is what we're going to start off with here today. Then we can have um, blob, um, blob triggers, which is the one that we're doing. So we, we have a blob, which is an image that is inside a blob storage. The blob trigger is listening inside for that, for that blob when you give it the name of the container of where it is. And the container is analogous to like a folder in terms of so yeah. when when that foot when that file appears in the folder, mm -hmm. do this thing exactly. Got right. it. Exactly. Okay. Um, you have other triggers um, like you know Cosmos DB, which is a NoSQL database. So you know you can you can have um, when there's an insert into that NoSQL database, you can also respond to that. And there are okay. several others as well that you can see here. But we're going to start off with an empty um, one for right now. And uh, oops, go, go up. And you see, it's also asking about a storage account. I mentioned to you before that storage account is um, is part is is needed inside um, uh, function apps because it's where it will hold all of the files and to some extent some of the runtime also operates there as well. So I'm going to use the storage emulator for now. You can have a named um, 
uh, storage storage um, account as well. Okay. But once this is done, we have an empty project. It's actually loading right now all of the uh, dependencies, so that takes a few seconds before this changes from yellow to okay. But in the meantime, we can actually come here and say add, and we're going to add a new item. It is going to be a sorry, a new function app. I'm going to call it um, uh, listen for pick. And we say add. And we're going to say it is a blob storage trigger. And here it says connection string. I'm just going to put con string right now. We're going to change it a little bit later. And path, this is where it's looking for that item. Mm, OK. All right. That, that folder the, that it's mm, going to be looking exactly. into. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be like a little bit of a, a scaffold of what's going to be there. And once this is here, then I'll actually you know, bring this back over into, into, um, into the, the, one, the solution that's already working. But just to break, just to give you, in, in its basic form, what you have here is um, the connection string to connect to, um, to, to, to your Azure, Azure, uh, Azure um, function app. Mm -hmm. You have the name of um, the container, and it's, it's going to be looking at the name of the file. That's the reason why when I said, when I was uploading the picture, I said Fabian Williams. Sure. So basically, it's going to be the folder, and then it's going to be that name. Okay. Um, it's going to um, have the blob coming as a stream. Um, there's going to be a name, the name object coming from off the um, the identifier here, and there's also a login that's there, so you can basically work within that in, within that framework. Okay, so that that stream mm -hmm. is our image. Yeah in binary format so we can parse it out. Exactly. Got now it. what's interesting about it is that you can certainly change that. So by default it will come to stream, but um, what I have here, um, it's basically almost the same setup where you'll see that it's the, it's the queue trigger, it's looking inside that, uh, that container, it has a connection string there, in this item, I'm saying I'm 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 taking uh, an item called OCR payload. Now, what I did, the stream is is it's it's somewhat just nebulous. It's out there. It doesn't know what it is in terms of a of a true object in terms of properties and uh, and uh, and, uh, and and attributes. Okay. By saying that I'm giving it a type of OCR payload, what I did is remember when we we were over here and um, we we're in looking at in, in, in the JSON property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I took this schema. And created a class for that called OCR payload. Ah, so now okay. I can basically represent it in terms of just the different, you know, the, the bounding region, the text, mm -hmm. the words, and now I have a complex object that I can start to work with, and just basically saying, you know, object dot property, and right. I can You've start got to that use strong type exactly around your OCR output. Exactly, got it. Right. Okay. So um, once I have that, then um, you know what I'm doing here. Basically, um, when I was in Azure Storage Explorer before, and you saw me um, saying that you have a several different queues. These are all of the queues as my output. So this is my input where I'm receiving that blob information, mm -hmm. and all of this information here from line 23 all the way down to 30. These are my outputs. So okay. so when, so what I'm doing is I'm setting this up as such that I can take some information in and once I get it in the format that I need to in terms of a proper um, you know user object then I can say okay I want to put it inside Office 365 I want to send an email I want to put it inside Teams and so on and so forth so it's just fanning it out into different um, into different queues. So so you're gonna so you're gonna do that. You've mm -hmm. got the analysis back. Mm -hmm. Fan out those results. You've got it looked like five other queues yep. there. That it, those. Uh, I'm I'm guessing you have other functions hanging off exactly. those queues. Exactly. Exactly. Ah, they right. go do appropriate things. Exactly. Okay. Now um, the way that I'm doing it here is is is, is, is I would say it's more demo aware than what would represent real life. There's a concept within Azure Functions also called durable functions, which is what I should be using, where you can actually have uh, a single entry point, and then you can have several other functions running inside there. So rather than handing it off into several different queues. It can be in one queue, mm. which can be seen by across by several different child functions. Okay. And that's a proper way to do it. But this just, I would say it demos better because it tells the story in a more oh, linear yeah. fashion than mm -hmm. having to explain that, but I just felt it necessary to put that out there as well. So once that is done, um, you know, I get that information coming in from the OCR data. I serialize it. Um, I put it through my own parser, um, which is looking at that OCR data, and I get my results back. And once I get my results back, I also make one other conversion call. And let's, let me see if I can just pull it up here under models. It's maybe a little bit messy, but we'll work with it. So there's my OCR payload, my full contact, my info. You notice it starts to take the shape of um, something better now. 
company name title yeah. address right so my full OCR payload is taking um is taking the partition key a row key because I'm putting this inside table storage and you need I those get that. <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> Siri <laughs> Siri's acting up exactly so I basically have my full card info and now I'm putting it into something that I can now start to work with a lot easier to you know to put inside a Microsoft um, you know Office 365 contact item sure so once I've done that then I, I, I basically get um, my partition key smart cards a row key which is a GUID um, I'm sending this to myself for right now and I'm basically taking um, uh, the table data and and, uh, and dumping it inside a table as well and then once that's once that's finished or in, in in concurrence with that, I'm also now making a call to the um, to the text um, analytics API doing the name entity framework, and here's where I, I need to do a little do a little bit of a cleanup. And I'll, I'll just come down here to this bit right now. So it it, it it's still a work in progress, but. Um, there are some things that it's the the API is going to say. Okay, I don't know what this is, so I just treat that as um, an unknown array. Just put okay. all of your stuff inside. Oh, just you don't know what this is. You don't know what this is. Give me an array of all of those items. So what I'm saying now is, okay, take take those items that are inside that array, a single element array, and then look for certain. You know, put it against the name entity recognition API. And if you recall, under the name entity rec recognition API, we had organization we had person we had mm. location yeah so once once if it identifies or if it triggers on that i'm saying okay it found an organ it's it found with them smith brown oh that's an organization let's start using that so i'm adding it into my Set table the, storage exactly yeah. um under um uh under email it looks at the at sign under web address it, sorry on the email yeah, it looks at the at sign in on emails for dot com dot you know all of the common patterns that you'll see for that and then once i've done that then i basically add it to the table then i basically load all of my queues and then each respective queue will start to pick that up and so then fan those out distribute those exactly okay let's okay. see for it let's see if we actually got anything back from over here i think sufficient time has happened even if let's see here uh, da, 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 da. I still don't see myself as yet, and but we can also take a look at those queues. Right? Yes, we can, and I know they're gone from the queue, which means it's just maybe let's actually check inside um, Firefox here and see if I have a new item in my Teams. What time is it? Oh, that's twelve eighteen. And sometimes the demo gods can play vicious games with you. I don't see it here, but let's use an example that I had from before. Okay. So you'll see it say here, I'm, I met Fabian Williams. Um, it has the website information. Um, this is basically taking that information and put it inside, inside um, Microsoft Teams. What it also does as well, oh, this is new. There it is. I, th I think it this just, ju it just, it just, it just arrived. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's live I know. <laughs> right. So here we have Fabian Williams popping right in as a contact. Yeah. Um, we also can look inside uh, here, and there's a Fabian. There it is. 4:23 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> right just on key. Just arrived. Exactly. So we have the key, and then I should also have, if I check my emails. Uh, okay. Well, is, is it okay to pull up my email on live TV? Uh, I don't mind. It is, I don't think anything's going to be problematic, but it's going to. Tell you what, can we go to the full camera go and, and then bring it up mm -hmm. so you can be sure that it's isolated to okay. just the email you want to show? Exactly. All right, we'll do that. So, what we have, uh, what we're going to have, which I think is a really cool part, is um, we, have, um, we have an email being sent to the person whose card you scan with you know, information about, um, you, know, information about you. What was identified. Yep, exactly. And also, your um and also let me just go ahead and grab it here open this up make this a little bit bigger all right so I, we can come back to here okay. what we can what we have here and i'll just download the pictures is you know a, a little cheesy picture of me doing a session telling you hey it's good that we contact with each other it says fabian williams from fabian williams because it's me to me but okay. it'll be it'll be personalized but we also have a vcf card here that i could certainly open up and it basically has my contact information now that you have on your phone. So you basically click on it and now you can add me to your phone. So what we've had from a photograph 
on a business card is we have a person going into Office 365 as a contact, which gives you corporate memory. Yeah. So you have a bunch of people out there at a conference similar to here today, people just taking photographs, it's feeding directly into the corporate system. So you sure. have that corporate memory and you have it at scale. Um, if you have dynamics, you can. St you, you could I was going to say ex dynamics or sales force exactly. to, to collect those sales leads. Exactly. Oh, yes. Um, something like a Mailchimp as well. Um, mm. You have it inside, um, you know, uh, Teams as well. So let's say that you have a set of people working, um, you know, in, as inside sales rep or whatever within the organization, and you want to have them start to move. You have that there as well. So there's very in one action, one click of a button, you basically are fanning out to both marketing to sales and fr from a corporate institution you know having a corporate memory of, of, of interactions within 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 your um, your company very cool yeah. now the the only things that that, mm -hmm. that I want to make sure that folks watching mm -hmm. um, if they wanted to implement something similar right we this is very much demo yep folks need to be aware of GDPR right those exactly. privacy standards mm -hmm. you can't just take pictures of everybody's quite right uh, business card and keep them forever quite right <laughs> quite right so it, it, the concept is amazing. Mm -hmm. The implementation is great. Mm -hmm. you, you got to make sure you handle those little legal yep. things. And like you were saying, the duration, the durable function. Exactly. Might be a better way to implement. Certainly, but you can also let's say that um, you know you you know within the con within the confines of GDPR and you know to be able to be you know to forget to have people you know oh, forgotten yeah, yeah. out of the system and be mindful of PII information as well. Um, you can certainly have functions running behind the scenes that's e that's that's either you know doing a cleanup jobs or to yes. or to, or to also put approval and checks into the system at any point, point in time. And I would also um, argue that you know this could be done in concert with something like a Microsoft Flow. Put a human yes. actor inside that in process as well, okay. rather than rather than having it going directly there. Let a human actor review it, click OK, do oh, whatever yeah. cleanup, and then move it forward as well. Oh yeah. yeah, I could see you could do something similar also with mm -hmm. receipts. Absolutely, right? Receipt processing. Yeah. Yeah. Get them delivered to whatever your accounting system. Is. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The the, the uh, applications of being able to chain those together mm -hmm. and have that machine learning cognitive services mm -hmm. in the middle. Terrific. It's terrific, yeah. Oh, really great stuff. Right. So um, the one thing I'll say is that, um, you know, you mentioned before, you know, the fact that there's several other cues here. So um, they, they, once you get a, hang, a handle for one, it, it's easier to do the others. The only things that are going to be different is in terms of like the authentication. So mm -hmm. um, when you're working with, let's say, you know, you the graph API in order to create that contact, then certain things are going to, and we can certainly talk to that. Um, let me actually bring that up. Let's close out of that, close out of that, and go to, um, uh, let's go to where I would have that. So go to uh, here, and go to portal at azure.com. Oh, hang on, mm -hmm. hang on. Mm -hmm. Can we cut away from the portal, please? Thank you. Okay. We'll make sure that none of your subscription IDs appear. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I didn't even think about that part of it. Thank you for having my back there. <laughs> Um, I, uh, well, I guess we can, you know, we, 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 can, we, we, we will speak to it quickly and then we'll get out of it. Is yep. there anything there? No, nothing's there right now. Okay. So let's go to application registration and, um, and that's not the one I wanted to be in. Uh, where's it at? Hold on. Uh, not fans, will we? Tell you what, we can we can speak to it here. So, okay. what we what we have here, like clicking into, um, yeah, when you're working with the graph API, um, there's a couple of things that you, that you have to have under consideration. One, how are you how are you in, how are you allowing interactions between the app and the user? Do you are you going to be always asking them for consent to you know because. In the end, when you take the picture, well, who are we sending this to? Are we sending it to the person behind the phone? Yep. Are we sending it to just you know a, a directory or a file that's sitting out there? How we want to handle that? So in my example, what I'm doing is I'm actually having it sent to the user, um, but I'm using um you know instead of using a delegated permission where I'm asking for your consent, I'm using application permission where you, the, the administrator can cons consent for the entire organization mm. for it to work, and I'm using certificates in to, in order to manage the call between um, Azure Functions and also um, you know the in, the uh, the graph you know the Office Five okay. graph. So 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 and, and and within that that gives me my identity context. But what I can do also is I can start to provide more granular permission in terms of saying okay in this instance I want to be able to um, you know to read or um, you know all profiles. But I can also say that I'd like to come inside here and say I want graph and I also want to do application permission. 
and I'd like to go into contacts, and I want to do read and write. Ah, okay. Right? So in, in this instance, once I do this, and you, I'll, I won't save it, but I'll go all the way up to saving it, <laughs> and I'll, I'll say that. Oops, not discard. Add permission. You, application permission, uh, contacts, read and write. Where's my save? Add permission. Hiding at the bottom. Hiding at the very bottom. You'll notice up here right now it says permission has changed. Users, you know, add it, and I can say add permission, but I need to grant consent. So once okay. I grant consent, now it won't ask me or ask the end user about grant, you know, giving permission because the admin has already done that. So. Once that's done, then now I have everything set up in order to be able to, to operate. So at this point in time now, um, when, when, uh, when you're coding the solution, you can use um, the, uh, the graph SDK and use the new authentication library, Microsoft um, MSAL, Microsoft Authentication Library, and, um, and, and, and uh, create a authentication provider that will work for you within, the, within the app. So that's if you're working with Office 365 and Graph and anything related to the applications that we saw before. It could be Graph, it could be SharePoint, it could be you know, Planner, it could be Teams, it could be anything. Terrific. One authentication model for all of that. In the case of, um, you know, uh, um, well, let's not use Microsoft, let's use um, something like a Dynamics or, sorry, a, a MailChimp or a Salesforce, then that's using more OAuth. So you basically will get um, either, you know, a, uh, a, a key, a token, exactly, yeah. you know, a client ID, a client secret that will give you a token, and you're able to use it that way. And probably can do traditional REST calls for that mm -hmm. as well. You don't really need an SDK for that. So even though the, the construct of the, um, the function app is the same, the authentication and how you're about handling the identity and handling the, um, so both authentication and authorization, you know, who you are and then mm -hmm. what you can do, that may be a little bit different as you work within the different, um, you know, data stores, sure. but that's probably the only difference that, that there is working um, within the system. It's quite easy to use. Terrific. Mm -hmm. This is really neat. I'm, I'm thrilled mm -hmm. to see how these pieces all fit together here. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got a session here at SharePoint Conference. Yes. going to dig in a little bit further on that? Absolutely. Um, the, the, the session actually has happened. It was this morning at um, at uh, 11, 11.30 to 12.30. Okay. And um, there were some leave behinds, um, you know, uh, with uh, for, for the code in um, a GitHub repo. So okay. if you go to github.com slash Fabian Williams. Let's share that link yeah. real quick. GitHub.com slash Fabian Williams. Fabian Williams. Yep. They're probably the one that's very right top of top of screen there for you to be able to pull this code down and go to business. The only thing that's not there is obviously my keys Certainly. <laughs> to Certainly. my tenants, you but you have everything. Keys, you have your own Azure Exactly. Right. That's great. Thanks so yeah. much for joining us. Thank Fabian. you for having this me. This was great. I love the demo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope I hope you out there join us tomorrow. We'll be back with more great interviews right here on SharePoint TV.